My bed is like peeking into a cozy miniature world with characters, props, and scenery all stitched by hand. With utmost care, the renowned fiber artist Sally Mayfor has created a picture book that takes you on an international journey into the homes of children around the world. On each spread, she captures the spirit of a different place and a different way of life in intricate detail. These are no ordinary illustrations. Sally creates her pictures with fabric, beads, and thousands of stitches, creating artwork that brings these children to life while illuminating the universal theme of children sleeping safely in their beds. Let me show you what went into making my bed. Sally Mavor's artwork is indeed unique. She has spent decades experimenting with a needle and thread, developing ways of embroidering, wrapping, and binding different materials together to create a visual narrative. And it should be noted that every scene and every stitch of the book was done entirely by hand. So I asked Sally where her very unusual personal artistic expression came from. Even as a young child, drawing with crayons was never enough. I felt that my pictures were not finished until something real was added, either glued or stapled or sewn to the paper. So what I make today and how I do it comes from this same need to find my own way of translating what I imagine into something tangible to share. In the 1970s, when Sally was an illustration student at the Rhode Island School of Design, she was encouraged to find her own artistic voice outside the two-dimensional mediums common for most illustrators and to create work in three dimensions. With this kind of permission from her teachers, she felt free to access her younger self and rediscover the joy of making things with her hands. For me, it's all about the tactile experience. Holding and manipulating materials in my hands is where the magic happens. Sally Mavor has built a career in children's books with her own brand of miniature make-believe. Her desire has always been to make art that connects with people in an intimate way. A few years ago, an editor approached Sally about illustrating Rebecca Bond's manuscript for my bed, thinking that her artwork would be a good match. Because Sally's working methods are so labor intensive, agreeing to illustrate a new book is a huge commitment. I asked Sally why this book made her say yes. When I read Rebecca's poem, I imagined scenes jam-packed with patterns and textures, all infused with a warm sense of home. What excited me most was the international aspect of the book. And then what? To begin, I studied lots of photos of children and houses and buildings and landscapes from different regions of the world. And using those as reference, I drew simple thumbnail sketches. Then I enlarged the drawings to full size and used those as guidelines for the finished artwork. Even before threading the first needle, I spent a lot of time going over in my head how to make all of the major parts so that they would come together in the end. All of the details and color choices came later as I started constructing the pieces. My favorite material is wool felt because it's sturdy and versatile and the cut edges don't fray. For this book, I also picked unusual fabrics such as a hundred year old age stained linen that was passed down from my grandmother it turned out to be the perfect texture for a Japanese tatami mat. Beads are great for adding a three-dimensional whimsical touch. With so many to choose from, 
The selection process was like an audition for bit parts in a play. Besides fabric and thread, I used a lot of wire. I've spent my whole life collecting interesting small treasures, from bits of wood to metal findings. When I see objects with special features that I think will convincingly replicate something in miniature scale, I put them aside, and sometimes they make it into my artwork. I first got to know the children in the book when I painted their faces on wooden beads. As I continued to make their bodies and sew their clothing, I fell in love with them. Then, it didn't matter how much time it took to bring them to life and create the places they call home. Time, yes, time. Each double page spread for my bed took Sally a month and a half to two months to create. After all, 18 scenes were completed, they were sent off to be photographed for reproduction in the book. At this point, the publisher's production team took over, overseeing the design, printing, and marketing of the book. Then, the pieces of artwork were returned to Sally to have their next life as an exhibition set to travel to museums across the country. I asked Sally why she thought making art for children's books was so important. Picture books are children's first introduction to art. And I want to give them something to connect with and care about. Grown-ups call attention to my techniques and perfect little stitches. But children respond directly to the emotional impact of the world I create with those little stitches. There is something for all of us to experience, young and old, as we travel the world through the pages of this remarkable book.